Well, hello, I'm Mike Festiva. Welcome back. This is part three in the mini cabin build series. Some people call them tiny homes or tiny houses. I prefer mini cabin or tiny cabin. Uh, this is just a one minute recap of part one and part two. If you haven't seen it yet, I recommend going back and checking them out. They're only 15 minutes per episode. I go over a lot of different little techniques along the way I choose to use, like ripping down two by sixes into two by threes to save a little bit of weight on the studs. Use uh, 3 8 plywood instead of a uh, half inch uh, OSB. It saves me quite a bit of weight. I'm really not planning to tow this thing around on the weekends and take it from camping spot to camping spot. I'm building this close to my house so I can uh, get it finished up around here. And then I'm going to tow it about 200 miles, leave it at a friend's place for a little getaway cabin, something I can go and enjoy in the summertime, and uh, a little snowboard cabin in the winter. So, all right, here comes part three. Enjoy. So even though I had that Tyvek style house wrap around this thing, I trust the uh, tar paper a lot more than I trust that house wrap. And the re only reason I didn't do a tar paper on the basic bottom layer was because I was putting up by myself on a rainy day. And that house wrap is a lot easier to roll out by yourself. It's a lot lighter material. So I had a friend here, my buddy Ryan was still up at the time from Montana. And so he helped me roll out all the house wrap here and uh, get that laid on. Now I'm getting ready to start uh, wrapping up these windows, kind of putting this weather seal on here and starting to install the white vinyl windows. I usually like to um, salvage most of my windows when I can, but on this project, I kind of needed to build and go. So I got some dimensions at the building store, what I could frame it out to. Later on, went back and bought the windows. If you got more time planning a project like this, looking at used building supply stores or keep an eye out on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace can save you a lot because windows get quite expensive. So one thing about this cabin, I've been working on it in the evenings, usually after I get off work, a 10 hour work day, get home, hang out with the family for a little while, have dinner, and I jump onto the cabin for an hour or two. Been feeling pretty scatterbrained on it. Haven't really been able to focus too well. Uh, just burning the candle at both ends kind of a thing. Here's like maybe a day off I had where it's the afternoon to evening, had a few hours before dark, and it wasn't pouring down rain. It's been a really wet spring. So getting more of this house wrap on here. I uh, definitely want to do a little complaint to this window company. I've had these windows before, and I don't know what kind of double-sided adhesive they're putting on those things, but those brown corner protector cardboard things do not want to peel off. So I'm going to have to come back in here with some uh, some type of cleaner to remove all the rest of the adhesive because they got some gnarly glue. Those guys could lighten up a little bit on that stuff. Yep, so I was feeling pretty good. I had a few hours on the day off to work on this thing, getting this window installed. One thing I want to mention here, I'm going to check the door frame with the level in a moment. Uh, and what you want to do when working on a cabin like this, because it's not really on a solid foundation, you're basically, you have it blocked in the corners and leveled off the best you can. But because it's portable, before you really get working on it, if you transport it, really make a point to level up each corner because your level's not going to be very good if the cabin's tilted at all. It's kind of a little different. So right here, I'm excited. I'm going to get the final big window. I have some help coming down to help me put it in place. I'm rolling back this uh, house wrap and going to just get it stapled back. And I'm going to be losing daylight another half an hour or more. So I'm going to pass the window up. And at that moment, I realized I made a mistake. I had a note in my phone I forgot to look at about a month ago that I framed that window an uh, inch and a half too short. And so I had to cut down the sill, which we'll come back to later. Right here, I'm using that little mini digger. Like I said, I'm accumulating a lot more hours on it. Been using it for all kinds of little chores and tasks around here. And it's a little tiny machine, but it still lifts a pretty good capacity. And having that hydraulic thumb has been awesome. Like I mentioned in the previous video, once I get more time and compiled on this machine, I'm going to put together a few different videos. First will be a purchasing review of kind of where I ordered it, why I cho chose the machine and, uh, and all that. If you don't know this machine, it's a home-built sawmill. This is what actually started the channel originally like over eight years ago. Was uh, First video was on making this thing because uh, 
Built the sawmill from scratch, want to share the information of how I ended up doing it. Original mill was about $250, maybe $300. Since then, I added a few hundred extra dollars for power feed and power height control. And recently, I spent the most money I have spent on the whole entire mill was buying that digital set works. But man, it really makes cutting wood really, really nice. So if you're interested in sawmills, you can go back through and check out my videos. All right, this is an old blade I had on all winter long and uh, teeth were a little dull. So I found that you can go back through and just touch the teeth up, keep the angle. It's good for one, two, maybe three sharpenings like this. And after a while, it's ready to pull the blade off. But blade's only like 22 bucks for this sawmill. If I can get a few resharpenings out of it by hand, it's, it's well worthwhile. So right here, I'm just milling a bunch of cedar for this uh, cabin. Some is going to be siding boards, rough cut, uh, kind of a really rough cut board and batten. And then some of the other stuff is going to be window trim boards. want to take a moment and give a big shout out to the subscribers that have been watching this series i really appreciate it it's a small portion of my subscribers that have actually been tuning in for it but i've been really happy you guys have been watching it and commenting and giving thumbs up on it definitely is encouragement um i want to also say i really appreciate everyone going the extra mile leaving comments on the last video and i'm sorry i didn't get back to everybody especially the people that commented in the early stage first two days of the video i was out of town and out of cell phone service hanging out with the family camping and by the time i got back to town uh, there was a lot of messages and i could only get back to so many so i tried to read them all i really appreciate it thank you so much got some siding cut and this stuff's all going to be window and door trim this is all three quarter inch i'll plane a little bit off cut a little bit of one inch there and the last board's uh one and a half inch thick and i'll figure out what i'm gonna do with that and get down to it got some good good wood here be great for this project like I said earlier, I completely screwed up and didn't see the note I had that I had to cut this wall down and just kept building on the cabin. So right now I'm removing that two by three sill board out of there and ripping down the siding. What happened originally was I framed the window and forgot to accommodate for that lower sill board. So just had to cut it down another inch and a half. Right now I'm pulling off the plywood is all stapled on. But, you know, it was a little bit of a step back. I wasn't really looking forward to tearing into the cabin again. But putting everything together as screws was pretty easy to take everything back apart again. And look, I got the big window in. This is the final main window. I got one small sailboat port light window I got to install up for the loft section just to get some good ventilation, but that's going to be really simple. Just wrapping the place and uh, going to begin ready to start putting on some cedar siding. I can't wait to get the cedar siding up here, so I'm going to jump onto that next. Sure wish I had my mini truck set up right now, but I got my camper on it, so the old Honda is going to have to do for hauling cedar. Not nearly as nifty, but it's going to work. Like I said before, I don't have power on the site down here, so got a generator set up, got my air compressor set up, got a little chop saw stand going on back here. Start on the siding. Let's get rolling on this, see what we can get done. It's going to take me a lot more time to notch this in around these uh, little 2x4 rafters. I think it's going to look a lot nicer when done rather than stopping at the bird block. So my work week's behind me. 
and I had all my tools staged down here ready to go. Woke up in the morning, sun was kind of peeking out a little bit, which is great. We've been getting a ton of rain this uh, late winter, early spring here, so it was nice to get up on a dry day. Have zero obligations. This can actually probably be a full dedicated day to this cabin, which I've not got one of those yet. So I'm pretty thrilled about getting out, try to get as much siding as I possibly can this day. See this little chop saw here? It's a little Bauer chop saw. I found that the Bauer tools don't seem to be as good a quality as the Hercules, but I've been waiting and waiting for a Hercules tool, a chop saw to come out, and they've never released one. So I dug around, I found a cool little battery adapter where you can take Hercules tool batteries and you can run them on uh, Bauer equipment. So I'll do a little video and a little link to that in the future, but pretty neat little attachment and having a chop saw man i've done a bunch of cabins the last few years and i would have loved to have a, a little chop saw like that on the job site battery operated everything's been freehand with the circular saw so i definitely appreciate that one Unfortunately, I'm running short on some eight footers. I got a few tens and some twelves. I would rather keep those for the outer edges where the peaks are a little bit taller. So I'm gonna jump up the sawmill real quick. Only a tiny bit of time lapse because you guys already saw a lot of that, but let's get cutting. Pretty typical. I forgot last time around this uh, mill, my uh, top guide bearings, this is the guide bearings that get all the uh, sawdust and debris on them. They blew out, but of course I buy them in like 20 packs. They're just basically skateboard bearings. I think they're 608, something like that. So put some new bearings on here and freshen this thing up. So I know I've mentioned this once or twice in some previous videos, but I might as well mention it again. When I started off on this sawmill, I built it from scratch and uh, I always wanted a mill, never ran one until I built this thing. And I really enjoy the process of cutting lumber. Um, even if you don't have the ability to build something like this from scratch, I did it because I was really broke at the time and sawmills are pretty expensive. Since then, they've come down quite a bit in cost. So even if you don't have the ability to fabricate one, Keep an eye out. Um, I did that little review video on that Woodland Mill I bought about a year ago. It's a little more portable, and it's a great little mill. So even if you can't uh, build one from scratch, consider just getting something like that. If you've always thought about getting a mill, just do it. So I got some split up siding on the uh, quad right there. Some other stuff to pick through, some scraps. This stuff here was pretty bad. There was a carpenter ant nest in this old log. So got some maybe five foot sections, but I'm actually gonna be building a chicken coop soon. So all these will get used for the chicken coop and see there's been some carpenter ants in here at one point in the past. But all this will get used, window trim or something. So I salvaged this threshold at work. It's a little thick to accommodate interior flooring. It's a little thicker than I like, but I'm gonna use it anyhow, it's free. I just gotta cut it down, chop saw, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna install it in here, and I probably have to take a little bit off the top of the door to accommodate such a thick threshold. I think it's gonna work just fine. So I've had this planter for about a year or so, whenever they came out. I got it and uh, works pretty good. It's a three blade planter and it's portable. That's a really nice thing. It's only probably 50 some pounds, 60 pounds. You easily can move it. The old planter I had it burned out and I replaced it with this one was an old Makita I got, it salvaged. It was broken down. I put new brushes in it, fix it up. But I've had it for quite a few years and there's just one problem after another. It's from the late seventies. It doesn't owe me anything, but <laughs> that old planer, man, uh, finally the drive wheels failed on it. It was going to be like 350 bucks, basically a cost of a new planer. So I got that Hercules and I've been pretty happy with it.
almost got a full day's focus on this cabin. Actually had to bust away for a little bit, run to town and go grab some hinges, switch that and some gasoline for the generator. So that took me about an hour, but back at it, got the hinges, trying to get this door installed. We'll see how it goes. Well, I think this was the first true day I've had to devoted to this cabin. I think the longest other day I've ever had was six hours. So got a lot done. The milling set me back a little bit more and having to run to town to get the hinges. But all in all, we got almost the whole thing sided minus a few feet that direction. So I'm pretty excited about that. Next episode, we're gonna jump on, uh, finish up the siding, jump inside, hopefully do some insulation, some wiring, start on the loft. Maybe start on the cedar ceiling inside. We'll see what we can get on the next episode. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. If you got a chance, share this with a friend, okay? All right, until next time, take care. Bye.